back again looking at the Vigco copy cart. A number of you commented that my last video was incomplete without a look inside the duplicator. And as it happens, I agree. So today we are going to take another look inside the copy cart to correct and add a little information from my last video, and we'll have a first look inside the duplicator device as well. Before we begin, I just want to add a disclaimer. I'm not an electronics guru. What follows is my best attempt to list the components found inside the two devices and show the boards to you. There could still be mistakes, and I really don't know how each of the ICs interact to make this thing work. My hope is this video will provide more insight than was previously out there for anyone interested to either see or possibly re-engineer or repair these devices in the future. If you wish to hear me pontificate about my history with this device, see how it works, and learn about the packing game, then I suggest you check out part one. So let's start with another look at the copy card. Start by removing the battery cover via pressing in on the cover and pushing away from the screw. Remove the three batteries. With the serial number sticker peeled off, use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw that is beneath it. Next, there are four points around the cart where it clips together. Carefully putting pressure at each of these points with your thumb and pulling the halves apart will pop the clips loose. Once all four corners are loose, open the cart slowly to reveal the PCB and internal parts. There's a plastic guide that will be loose inside the cart. This guide is for plugging the cart into the Atari slot. The PCB is connected via two wires to the battery terminals. Lift it carefully so as not to stress the connections. If you need to remove the PCB fully, you'll need to remove the battery terminals first. Here, I just want to give you a look at the PCB so I'll only flip it around instead of removing it. I've done my best to accurately list the components on the PCB. A big thanks to a number of people on both Mastodon and here in the YouTube comments that helped identify the 411 NAND gate IC and the diode. And here are some close-ups of the PCB and components. Now, on to the duplicator. Like the copy cart, begin by removing the battery hatch. Mine was missing this piece from day one. Next, remove the serial number sticker to reveal the screw underneath. I've already pre-removed the sticker. And remove that screw with a Phillips screwdriver. Also, like the copy cart, there are four plastic clips around the sides of this cart, but they are not under the ridges. Instead, they are back a bit from them. Again, gentle pressure with your thumb and a little prying with your fingers will release the catches. You'll find one side is more pliable than the other when pressing. You want to press on the softer side.
The top of the cart will open. There's nothing connecting between the two halves, but the red button is just sitting on the switch and, in this case, fell off as I was opening the unit. Inside, you can see the PCB and cart connectors, but let's take that out for a moment and look at the cart block. A few of you asked how the block connects to the shell, or if it was actually connected at all. As you can see, the block is molded into the lower half of the shell as a series of plastic teeth. It seems like if you have a tiny modeling saw and patience, or a Dremel with a sanding wheel, if you don't, these could be removed without too much trouble. Back to the PCB. You can see here there are a total of three ICs on the board, some resistors, transistors, diodes, and a few capacitors. There's also these Foxconn branded connectors. I tried looking up the top number, but nothing came up in my searching for this specific connector. I've compiled a list of the components here. At a high level, I know this device copies the data from the original cart to the copy cart, and the ICs apparently are a 4013 dual flip-flop, a 4049 hex buffer converter, and a 4040 binary counter, but how these work together I cannot explain in detail. Again, here are some various photos of the PCBs and components. I will place all the photos in an album link below in the description, as well as the component list. I have a couple final thoughts for now as follows. Both devices have electrolytic caps. At some point, they will need to be replaced to prevent damage to the board. These things aren't meant to last forever. I was asked about plans to make a schematic of the devices. I have no plans to do so currently. I don't really have the experience in creating electronic diagrams. My hope was the information in my videos would be enough that if someone was so inclined they could re-engineer this thing. I want to give another huge thanks to the communities on Mastodon and here on YouTube that provided information on some of the bits and pieces of the devices. It really helped. Thank you for checking out this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed or found this interesting. Feel free to comment below and let me know what you think.